All right, so welcome back to another episode of Time Out with the Sports Doctor podcast. And we have a special guest tonight, uh, Mr. Troy Horn. So uh -huh. you might know this name because if you're listening to the podcast a few weeks back on an episode, I was talking about mental toughness for the young athlete. And uh -huh. we kind of reviewed the book. So guess what? We have the author of Mental hey. Toughness for the Young Athlete uh -huh. on today. So this really just shows kind of the power of networking. Um, mm -hmm. I posted on his on Instagram about the book and that, you know, we have reviewed it and that it's a great read for athletes, for coaches, for family members. And, you know, he reached back out to me and here we are, you know, a couple of days later. So very glad to have you on. So just in brief introduction, Mr. Troy Horn is uh, an entertainer. He is an you. author. Yeah, yeah. He is a husband. He is a father. Um, and, you know, he is a motivator and he is changing the dynamics of youth athlete athletics and you know because we know about coaching on the court but mm. the mental part of coaching is something that's definitely missing and he he's solving that magic piece so welcome to the podcast this podcast is brought to you by zero gravity skin a prolific leader in the aesthetic devices market delivering anti-aging complexion clearing hair growth and pain management solutions across the globe featuring the perfectio x a two-in-one device which treats both pain and signs of aging and is actively working to reverse cell damage accumulated over time. Also, the Relaxio, which provides damaged cells with the vital energy necessary to quickly renew and recover in the most optimal way. For more information, please visit ZeroGravitySkin.com and use code Dr. Derek 30 to receive 30% off your purchase. Again, that's zerogravityskin.com, promo code Dr. Derek 30. Thank you so much for having me, man. This is really cool. And, you know, I've got to, I've got to uh, ask you to kind of follow me around and, and boost, my, <laughs> boost my feelings up like that. Like, you know, I feel good about all that introduction. Sure, that's sure. awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So as I mentioned in your book, it's you and your son, yes, sir. Uh, Moses Horn, who is, yes, sir. he's a senior now, correct? He is going into his senior year. That's Oak crazy. Academy. So he is a major baller, you know, yes. in basketball. So he's got a bright future. Um, yes. But, you know, the way that you're molding him around the game of basketball is mm -hmm. amazing. So well, thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's just talk about a little bit about your background. You know, okay. before we start recording, you let me know that basketball was not your path. So tell us about you growing up and um, kind of your path as an entertainer and as, as a performer. Yeah. So when growing up for me, it was all about music. You know, I loved to sing and and it was just something I did around the house. And then one day my mom, you know, said, you know, hey, you're going to uh, sing at church next Sunday. Like, not like in a couple of Sundays. She said like next Sunday. Right. And I was like, uh, no. And she's like, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the next Sunday, you know, I'm sitting up there with my sisters and my heart's beating. I can hear my, you know, heartbeat in my head, you know, when you're like that nervous. And after we got done singing that song, um, the congregation gave us a standing ovation. And from that moment on, I was just like, this is, this is for me. And so I went and did it in middle school and high school, went on to um, get a scholarship to do music in college. It was, you know, moved to LA and was able to be signed to a record company and then, you know, tour and, you know, do some Broadway stuff. It was, I was really blessed to be able to, you know, do music uh, for a living. So that's kind of my journey in a five minute, quick blurb there yeah. sure sure so how many children do you have three three okay yes. that's the magic number I said once you get three your world is completely insane you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have three as well I have uh, yes. two girls and a boy and you know we were kind of accepting the fact that I was going to be a girl dad mm -hmm. and boom here comes number three so, you know, it's, the reason that there's two people in a relationship is a reason, right? You got two mm -hmm. hands, two feet, multiply that by two, you got four, you know, right. so you can play man to man with these right, kids. Right. But once they get you outnumbered, that three to two, you got to go to a zone. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely to the zone yeah. defense. Yeah. Definitely. It, you got to yeah. get, you know, they we went out from, quick. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> if you spread out far enough, they can't keep up. You know, so. <laughs> 
for now anyways right yeah 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 <laughs> so my kids are they're uh 11 9 and 7 so oh, nice. a little bit younger but you know we're just now getting into the sports realm so i'm going to be leaning on you for the advice as a as a sports dad so to speak. yeah so. man it's <laughs> oh man it's beautiful man i can I, you know it is a beautiful time and and uh yeah, I mean, the thing I would say, you know, for any parents out there who are beginning that journey, remember, you know, that this thing is going to go fast. It goes really fast. Enjoy all the moments. And although, you know, we push them to excellence, always remember, you know, to have some uh, fun times with them as well, because they get, they go fast, man. They get yeah. fast. Yeah. And like you mentioned, you know, I was, we talked about the email that you sent out today about kind of. Mm -hmm how they can take over your whole life if you let them with the travel yeah. schedule, the rigorous travel schedule and being from one city to another city and usually not big cities, right? You're in little random towns with- Random. <laughs> from Motel <laughs> 6 and you know, you're right? you find a good holiday in. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, and with, in my family, two working parents with mm -hmm. three kids, um, it can get crazy really quickly. Yes, yes. Yes. So were you a student? I mean, I know you said you were an entertainer, right? And mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. here, here comes a son who's interested in basketball. Right. Tell us about, you know, that kind of shift for you, not really being as familiar with sports. How did you take that on? Is that why you started to study kind of the philosophy of everything? Yes, because I knew absolutely nothing about it when <laughs> it started. Um, when, when, as the story goes for Moses, we, he was in piano lessons and he was in the children's choir. And, you know, we just started elementary school. I think he's, you know, 10 or 11 years old or whatever, you know, doing that stuff. And they had a basketball week in gym. And uh, he's playing and having a good time or whatever. And his PE teacher comes and finds me in Carline. So, you know, we're in Carline doing the Carline pickup. And she comes to my window and I'm like, why is this lady talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I wrote on the window. I'm like, hi, Miss Judy, how's it going? And she's like, great. She goes, so... um, are you guys into sports? And I go, no. Yeah. She goes, well, I think Moses has an aptitude for uh, basketball. You might want to look into it. And I was like, basketball? That was nowhere on the radar. <laughs> Not at all. And so I rolled the window and I said, thank you. And I turn around and I, and I say, so um, you, don't wanna, you like basketball? And he's like, I love it. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So we got into yeah. the why and I started learning, you know, I, I started picking up books, reading, um, just studying basketball, because for me, so many people told me, you know, in the beginning of music that it was going to be, you know, hard and impossible and all these things. And for my kids, I'm always, I'm always 100%, no matter what you want to do, let's figure out how to do it. Now, obviously, there are no guarantees of life. Right. But we're going to go, we're going to learn about this and we're going to at least know what we're doing. We're not going to guess. We're going to, you know, read books. We're going to learn. And that's what kind of put us on this journey, you know, for him. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk about mental toughness for the young athlete. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about just the overlying theme of the book. Okay. So the whole idea was, so in the beginning, um, as I'm sure you're going to see, and a lot of new parents will see, um, I'm just going to be straight. Adults can talk crazy <laughs> to some of these. Oh, young yeah. People. Oh, yeah. And, I got and, a story after you finish. Don't share a story. <laughs> I mean, so you're like, what's happening right now? Because he's 12 years old. Mm -hmm. But so, anyway, so I saw this coming and it wasn't going to be something that was going to be avoidable. So, um, you know, in the beginning, I saw it taking a toll on his joy and his happiness and his, you know, love of the game. And so I was like, well, We've got to fix this. This can't be, I can't be the only person to have experienced this and gone through this. So right. let's figure out how to help him navigate this. And that's when we started, that's when I started studying, you know, okay, so what do other athletes do? And, you know, we followed, you know, Kobe, who we were blessed to interview labor later. We, we studied um, Pele. We studied, you know, a lot of other athletes in marathon running and soccer and, and just some of the things that they use to help themselves get over their own mental hurdles. And I put them together, you know, in eight steps, you know, that were easily digestible for him at his age. And we kind of started going through them one by one, just as our, by ourselves, you know, it wasn't supposed to be, you know, a book or anything like that. It was just for us. 
And then, you know, I started seeing him getting better mentally, you know, being able to take these challenges on mentally. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. Yeah. But then at the same time, Dr. There, I started seeing like these other kids struggling with it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, that's not, that, that, that kind of sucks that they don't have the access to this stuff. So, you know, my wife was like, why don't you write it down? Because people started asking me like, so how do you help him with this? How do you help him with that? You know, and that's also the beginning of our podcast. Cause so many people were asking, how do you help him? Cause he, you know, started doing really well. And so I said, Hey, let me just write it down and share it with you all. And um, so I wrote it down and, you know, then it turned into a book and we put it up and, and um, you know, the rest is history. So I think it's important to highlight that you didn't sit down one day and say, I'm going to be an author of a youth sports book, right? <laughs> it was a process of, I want to help my kid. Right. And because I can see that there's a lack of knowledge and information right. now that I'm helping one person and I have five people asking me the same thing, right. let me write it down. Now it's a book. Now it's a podcast. So, right. you know, that's the thing of just starting because many mm. times when you have that inkling or that idea and you just start to pursue it it'll start to gain clarity as you you know each step of the way mm -hmm. and you yeah. mentioned um, one thing you talk about in your book a lot is what we're telling our subconscious mind and mm. you know how it cannot decipher between can't and can or don't and do you know right. so it just sees that message so I mentioned that my daughter's playing softball so we're at the softball field and it's one of the smallest kids on the team, number one. Mm -hmm. And she comes up to bat and you can just tell, like, she would rather be anywhere in the world than at home plate, you know. Mm -hmm. Grandmother sitting in the stands and the baby will not swing the bat. Like, she is terrified of swinging the bat. And every time she strikes out, she goes back to the dugout. Grandma comes out of the stands and goes down there and just chews her out. And I was like, man, this is insane. Number one. It hurts, right? It hurts. It hurts it to hurts. even watch it as an adult. Yes. You know, the little child is crushed. She already yes. feels inadequate playing the sport. And here you are coming to make her feel even worse. So we definitely have to be careful with our words and mm -hmm. how we, you know, even when we're trying to give positive criticism mm -hmm. or constructive criticism, we still have to be very careful with um, the way that we voice things. So let's kind of talk about that subconscious mind and the philosophy behind that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, like just specifically about just like. Tom, when you're talking about, you yeah. have to say positive things. You right, tell right, yourself right. the things that you want to do versus saying, I can't do this or right. the way you're going to focus on can't. Right, right. So, so what we learned from that is that, you know, and this is from just doing uh, entrepreneurial research, because I'm also like kind of into doing that, is that your subconscious mind, as crazy as it sounds, can't understand, don't do whatever. Mm. It only hears, do whatever, which is weird as we are like conscious beings. We're like, well, what do you mean it can't? For whatever reason, the science, I, you know, again, I'm not a scientist either, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, I'm not a doctor, you know, it's like, right. so I can't, but, but what I'm saying is the subconscious mind doesn't hear the word don't, it just hears, do whatever. So if you say, don't miss your layups like we talk about in the book then all your subconscious mind here is miss your layups like for instance if i tell you right now don't think of pink elephants right <laughs> the first thing you don't think of is pink yeah. elephants right. right i mean we all do it right the minute i said don't think of pink elephants everyone had a picture of pink elephant in there mm -hmm. so yeah. what we have to understand is that we have to say to our subconscious mind think of pink elephants make your layups um swing the ball uh swing the bat sorry mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. kick the ball because now we're telling the subconscious mind and having this big juggernaut work with us and help us achieve our goals, as opposed to, you know, don't do whatever. So that's sure, something that we sure. learned that really helped a lot. Yeah. So you mentioned remove the word don't, just mm. kind of the, some of the things, uh, the visualization piece. Mm. You know? And that's something that, I mean, that's huge. That's like, huge. I literally, I was doing Hal Elrod, The Miracle Morning. Yes. At the age of like 40, before I even started nice. to think about visualizing. Now, of course, with surgery, I know that, you know, I'll study the technique and then I'll mm -hmm. sit up there. And, but I never really thought about it, just doing it on a day-to-day -day basis about mm -hmm. little things. So kind of touch on the power of visualization. Yes. I mean, 
it's the as a uh, Les Brown says, is the theater of your mind. You know, it's like, yeah. or maybe someone said it, but anyways, the theater of your mind is the most powerful thing that you can do. And you know, kids are blessed because they have YouTube, they have you know, Instagram. They even have what, what's funny is video games. For instance, right. they have um, <laughs> baseball video games where you can create a character mm-hmm. that looks That's like so real. You. That's so real now. <laughs> And you can watch yourself as this character be successful in football, baseball, softball, basketball, whatever. And all those things are tools that we didn't have. You know, we we had to go old school and, you know, lie down and turn on the kumbaya music and yeah. see the thing. But they have all these tools. And when you start to use them, it just changes everything because the body starts to duplicate the movements that it's seen, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's all these stories about, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, any basketball player, because they were in that basketball world talking about how I would watch Michael Jordan do whatever and then go out into the front yard and practice it. But right. we missed the part. We always focus on the go outside and practice it. But we always skip the part where he says, I would watch mm-hmm. Michael Jordan do it. And then I would go out and do it. So it's like, you know, going and watching these things is a huge advantage that they have. You know. Right. And that's the engraving technique that you mm-hmm. mentioned. Mimic the pros, don't mimic the Joes, right? Yes. So, <laughs> hey. So, yeah, yeah. Yes, hey, I, I studied the book. I'm telling <laughs> you. You know, so I mean, now with YouTube and all the different platforms where everything literally is recorded, you know, I'm sure mm-hmm. pretty much every game, every time your son steps on the court, someone's recording. It doesn't even right. have to be you, but they have the ability to number one, review their own tape but also go and review yes. the game tape of the person that they're, you know, trying to model their game after. So, yes. And for parents starting out, it removes all like, you know, the need for you to say, Hey, why did you, or don't whatever Just say, Hey, you know what, we're going to go back and just review. And I want to know what you think. I want to see what, what you think. And then you can um, help them get to the point to where they want to go. Because what I've also learned in that is that, they've heard everything you said and right. you know we like to say it over and over and over again but they heard it the first time <laughs> yeah and what's funny is when we get quiet and we just watch the review of the tape they will say what you were going to say you don't have to say it you know and then it becomes their journey which is way more valuable than anything we can do when it becomes their journey, when they own it, when they are like, okay, I watched my, you know, I watched game film, which every pro does. I think, mean, you know, Richard Sherman was talking about, we watch game film. Mike Tyson, we watch game film. Kobe Bryant, we watch game film. Like every person, Steph Curry, I watch game film. Everyone watches game film because then you get to one, visualize yourself and see, oh, so when I step up to the plate or when I step up to the, basket this is what i these are my tendencies and i need to change those but now i know that you change them because i've seen myself doing it, you know so. at what age was it when you saw maybe your son start to transition from okay i'm just showing up playing in these tournaments mm-hmm. um, because it's something that basketball players do to actually be in a student of the game actually you know starting to see his own tendencies and being able mm-hmm. to correct those things um it was about eighth or ninth grade eighth and ninth grade because in eighth like at eighth grade it started becoming you know high school basketball and you know from eighth grade to ninth grade it's like in middle school you can be pretty dominant you know because everyone's in middle school mm-hmm. you know the eighth graders blah 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 but once you get the that that gap from ninth grade to twelfth grade that's different yeah. <laughs> that's a different you know when you're coming from what is it how are they in ninth grade 13 14 13 14 yeah yeah playing against 17 maybe right. 18 the body is different the though. body is different you're on the other side of puberty right? <laughs> yeah. so and, and also the mentality is different you know um the one thing that i would say you know that has been beneficial was surrounding them with with peers who are also on that same track and this is tough mm-hmm. because you know we have athletes who are student athletes and if they want to you know really kind of follow that path of making it something that they can do, you know, in high school or in college or whatever, it kind of has become a thing around eighth or ninth grade. And actually in one of our podcasts, Chauncey Billups said the same thing. He goes, 
you know, seventh grade, I decided I was going to go all in on, you know, doing basketball because I played football. I was into all these things, but he goes, I knew at that age, if I didn't commit, cause he goes, I wasn't, you know, the biggest kid. I wasn't the strongest kid. I weigh, you know, 110. I was maybe at the time five, seven, five, eight. I wasn't going to, you know, if I didn't commit, I wasn't, it wasn't going to be good for me. So, right. and that's tough as a parent, you know, because, you know, we want them to have, you know, the fun kid hang out and do whatever. And that can be right. part of it, but you know, there also needs to be that focus if that is their decision. You know? Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from the book was nothing is personal unless you make it personal. Do not embody others negative thoughts. So, you know, that's huge mm. because yeah not even talking about kids anymore, as adults, <laughs> we can get in our feelings so easily or get easy. so carried away about what other people think and care or say about us. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not personal unless you make it personal. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that was a big statement. And nine times out of 10, they ain't thinking about us anyway. Right. And that's the funny <laughs> thing, when you realize, all these thoughts, you're like, oh, that person's thinking about me or oh, that person's they ain't thinking about you. They're thinking about right. themselves just like you right. are thinking about yourselves, about wondering what people are thinking about you. They're doing the exact same thing. They ain't thinking about you. Right, exactly. <laughs> so. exactly. Now, tell us about the Hoop Shop podcast. And like you mentioned, you've already kind of name dropped a couple of names. Mm. When did you start it and how did it grow so fast? The Sabre Training Bat. It's like no other training bat you've ever used before. So the purpose of the Sabre training bat with its modified barrel is so that you can perfectly sequence and get behind the ball, getting the bat on plane sooner, creating less miss hits, more line drives, higher batting averages, and more exit velocity. The Sabre training bat is the number one training bat on the market. Sabre bats the training bat that's gonna take you to your best swing. Wow, well, you know, at the time when we started it, you know, it was maybe five years ago. And uh, we, were one, we were like the only youth podcast kind of out there for basketball. Um, and I started it because uh, the same thing. Mm -hmm. People were asking, you know, kind of what were you guys doing? Where are you guys going? Why are you going there? And, you know, as a parent out there, eventually, you know, you get to the point where you're like, man, I see that person over there hurting or I see that person over there struggling with this. How can I help them? Because we're all just trying to help our kids. I mean, at the end of the day, we're like, how can I help this young woman or young man, you know, succeed in whatever they're trying to do, whether it's basketball, academics, um, whatever it is. And so having the information and not sharing it for me kind of felt a little crummy. So I was like, let's share it with as many people as possible. And hopefully we can, you know, help a lot of people. And next thing you know, you know, we're getting calls from lots of really cool people and interviewing a lot of cool people and helping just helping people, which was the whole idea of the show altogether. So tell us how you end up landing Kobe Bryant as a guest <laughs> on your podcast. So we're doing this, we're doing a podcast, you know, and we had already interviewed and I, and I'm really grateful for, you know, Earl Boykins, Jake, Jason Richardson, um, John Lucas, um, uh, Chauncey Billups, all those guys were hopping on the show. Derek White, who's currently still playing with the Celtics, um, Deshaun Schwartz, who's now playing in the summer league. Um, all these really cool people hopped on the show and that were gracious enough to um, allow us to interview them. Um, and so we're doing this, this, this show, and we're just going through, you know, kind of just talking about topics and talking about his journey. And I get an email from uh, uh, Kobe Bryant's publicist at the time. And she goes, I see that you guys, you know, have a decent audience out there. And Kobe's starting to write this book series called the Wiznard series. And um, we would love to have you all talk about the book on your podcast. And this is an email and I'm like, okay, so, um, you know, how does that work? What do you have? You know, what, it, what is your thought process? And she emails me back and she says, um, I would love to have, you know, the editor or the publisher kind of hop on and tell the, tell your audience about the book. And so this is where, you know, the mental toughness thing comes in for yeah. you guys. I said, I wrote back and I said, you know, 
we've had, you know, these people on our show um, and our listeners, I don't think would really resonate with the publisher. However, if, um, you know, if Kobe would be willing to hop on, you know, for, you know, 30 minutes or so, we'd love to have him. And he sends me back, you know, an email. She's like, oh, that sounds great. You know, Mr. Brian is just so busy, blah, blah, blah. You know, blah, blah. And I'm like, right. well, that's great. You know, well, you know, if that ever becomes something he wants to do, then let us know. Otherwise, we're going to have to pass. A couple of days later, I get an email that says, uh, Mr. Brian can meet at this time, this time. And I'm like, what? <laughs> So, so, um, you know, I set it up and, um, you know, I call him on the phone and man, that was just, it was such a gift and such a surreal moment, you know, um, just to hear. And he was just, he was just a dad, just like us, man. It's like, he was talking to his daughter. What's the, what's the little one's name? The baby. Blame on the name. But he was, he was talking yeah. to her. He goes, you know, mama, I'm going to be done in a few minutes. Let me get off this call. <laughs> I'm saying this on, I'm like, we're all just human beings trying to help our kids. That's it. And that's what he was doing. And I was like, hey, I want to create these stories because I want my daughters to see, you know, just more stories that they can identify with. And that's the whole point of the Wisner series. He wanted, you know, young Kobe to be able to say, hey, look, here's a book that I can read that, you know, I can identify with. And it's written by someone that I admire. and you know, he's doing a podcast interview with us in his house, you know, getting ready to go play with his daughters. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's, it was, a, it was a, an amazing moment. It was really yeah. cool. I mean, to be able to capture it, you know, never did you know how his life was going to end so shortly, but to be able to capture that moment is something that, you know, neither you or your son, I'm mm -hmm. sure will ever forget. No, and no. I mean, you have to go listen to some of these episodes because <laughs> your son just, I mean, he cuts up. <laughs> I mean, he, you can tell he's just having the time of his life he, on the podcast. He was a funny, he was a funny yeah. guy. He's yeah. a funny guy. Yeah. yeah, man. It's, you know, it's been a really cool time. We're, we're getting ready to start it up again as he goes into senior year to kind of, you know, talk about the journey of where we've been and where he's going. And, you know, right now, you know, because of COVID, it's like his, he's in recruiting, you know, getting talking with a lot of coaches, but, you know, it's like, we're trying to figure out the next step for him. Um, you know, he's messaging, I think something like 15 to 20 schools. And I'm, I'm just like, you know, as a parent, you're like, can we just wrap it up and, <laughs> and right. go somewhere? Yeah. You know, Let's but you know, this is part of the process, you know, this is yeah, part of the process that is. we'll be able to share with someone else because, you know, there will always be the transfer portal. There will always be, you know, this thing that's going on because, you know, the pandemic kind of put us in a new space. So I hope it's to document that so that, you know, when you get to the point to where, you know, your kid's going sure. to 11th or 12th grade, you can go back and say, okay, so this is what this is looks, this looks like. Cause it doesn't look like it looked three years ago. Right. Right. You know, and like you different... mentioned, there's so many different things about the recruitment process or right. just the college process now with name, image, and likeness. Yes. Um, which he will have yeah. a huge jump on, you know, yeah. with, the transfer portal, which has just, yeah. I'm sure, been become the coach's nightmare, but you know, it's yeah. an ever evolving game. So, yeah, to be able to have your pulse on it is very important. Yeah, and we have to learn how to navigate it because it's not going away. I mean, yeah. you know, once there was a backlog, if you will, of of students and student athletes, it doesn't just flush out. There's always going to be this process. So, you know, we need to learn how to navigate that. So on Time Out with the Sports Doctor, this is your final time out. So yeah. you've literally been a student of the game, and now you're teaching that game to, you know, the masses. So it's awesome to see. And as you're still evolving as a sports dad, you know, you have yeah. a child performing at a high level. Mm -hmm. um, what advice? I know you've given a lot of advice. You say, go mm -hmm. read my book. If you want to say that. <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> what advice do you give a parent who is trying to, hopefully not trying to push their kid into mm -hmm. it, but trying to support their kid mm -hmm. as they, you know, chase the game that they love or whatever okay, so it might be. It could even be the arts. Yeah. The arts, no matter what it is. And um, my advice to be, would be two points. And number one is, um, you know, always be searching, always be helping them, you know, kind of expand themselves as artists, musicians, basketball players, um, gamers, whatever it is that they're doing, because my younger son wants to be an esports guy. So, you know, um, comfort is the enemy of progress. And so, 
I would say always be finding a way to, you know, motivate them and inspire them to leave the comfort zone, maybe stick in it for, you know, a little bit and, you know, but then it's, it's time to leave if we're going to where we want to go. Um, always remember that they're kids, one, they are children, even though, you know, even though they're taller than you right. or, you know, they, they're bigger than you or whatever, they're still kids, you know, they still need for you to hug them. They need, still need for you to tell them, you know, I love you. Um, I'm proud of you. Uh, you know, Hey, you know, I know that was a rough game, but it's all right. You know, there'll be many games and I am proud of you despite, you know, whatever happened and we need, you know, get incrementally better every day. That's our goal is to get a little better every day. And then I guess the last piece would be, you know, kind of, you know, to that point, it's, it's not going to always be easy is what I want to say. Um, you're, there will be days when you're going to need to say, Hey, look, you know what? I know we don't feel like it today and we don't have to go 110%, but we need to go. We need to go to the gym and, you know, put up 25 or whatever. So it doesn't have to be full. You only have to do full sprint. We don't even have to like count. We, we just need to go and just run through the motions for 30 minutes just to do it today. And then you come back home and you can do whatever. Um, because, you know, I was talking to my wife, we do all these things. We, you know, we have them eat food because we know it's good for them. We have them go to school. And I can't tell you how many times my kids were like, <laughs> I don't want to go to school. But we're like, right. you know what? It's about consistency. It's about always showing up. It's about, you know, continuing even when you don't want to. And those are messages and lessons you, you can use in life as an adult. Not every day are you going to want to go to work. Not every day are you going to want to, you know, if you're blessed enough, not every day are you going to want to go out and play in front of the cameras or whatever. Right. But you need to learn the habit of, you know what, this is my choice, this is my commitment, I'm committed, and I'm going to be consistent. And every day I'm going to do a little. Doesn't have to be the end all be all, but it needs to be a little. So, right. And on a, you know, I was thinking as you were talking on a physical rest day, that it can mm -hmm. be a time to work on your mental game, your mental exactly. toughness, right? Yes. Since that's what we're here mm -hmm. talking about. But and not to always be physical. Yeah, it can be mental. Yeah. Yeah. You can be and watching the pros, not the Joes. Watching the pros, <laughs> not the Joes. And I can't, we can't get off this podcast without talking about writing down your dreams. Uh, let's talk, let's touch on that because as you mentioned, dreams should be big, dreams should be scary. Mm. And the more you talk about them or the more you write them down, I'm good about thinking about them. Mm -hmm. I'm not good about actually writing them down. What's the importance of actually physically writing down your dreams? it ties it into your mind. Again, this is something we learned. It's the, the science of writing it down. If you, you know, Steve Harvey talks about write it down. There's an inspirational, Oprah Winfrey talks about write it down, vision boards, visualizing. Writing it down ties it into um, your brain. It just, they're actually, um, I don't forget what they call them, but um, little circuits in your brain that tie your two, um, and you probably know this, the hemisphere, hemispheres together. Right. And it, and it, and it, and it um, actually bores a path of learning in your mind to do this. And when you're writing it down, you're using the kinetic tool of actually taking action and writing it down, and it puts it in your mind um, even more. So right. writing it down is, is essential. And what I tell you know, our kids to do is make it easy. You don't have to write a paragraph because then you made it harder on yourself. You know, yeah. for instance, you can write down, I am a number one best-selling author. That's your whole thing. I um, average a triple double. I don't know. I mean, whatever your dream is. I, oh, for instance, actually Deshaun Schwartz, the guy that um, is playing similarly right now, he wrote down, I am I'm recruited by Pac-12 schools. That was what he wrote down. He didn't write down, you know, anything more than that. And you right. can write that down. But it was specific, right? Yes. <laughs> Pac-12 schools. That's very specific. There are only a few schools in Pac-12, right? So you can, you can do it. You can make it, keep it simple um, and write down just one or two sentences. So it's not like this big thing when I've got to sit down and, you know, get hand cramps from writing down all this stuff. No, just keep it simple. But definitely write it down. And I would say in the morning when you wake up and at night when you go to sleep, but that's discipline. You guys that's can do discipline. it. Discipline I believe in sure. you all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, 
sharing with me on this show. Thank you for all the gems and the pearls of wisdom that you've left for the audience. Um, and just tell everyone how they can get your book, how they can connect with you, um, how they can follow you know, your son Moses in his career. Yes, yes. So you can find us. Um, the book is available on Amazon. Just type in mental toughness for young athletes. You'll see his face on there merged with a tiger or a lion or something like that. Yeah. It's called mental toughness for young athletes. Um, we have the parents guide. We have the kids guide. And um, you can follow him on Twitter. Um, I think he's changed his handle to the Moses Horn because, yeah. you know, he didn't like Mo for real, which, you know, we had for a long. Anyway, so he, he's the Moses Horn on Instagram. I think he's <laughs> on TikTok and all these other places. So um, you can find him on Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. And he's probably on some other thing. I'm um. Troy Horn, and you can find, I think it's Troy Horn Official because someone else had my name. They got to the socials before I did. So um, I'm a Troy Horn Official on Twitter and on uh, Instagram and uh, Troy Horn on Facebook and all that stuff. So you can find us there and I think that's about it. Absolutely. Oh, and um, there's a the free book. download yeah. you can get oh, um, okay. if you go to gameReadycourse.com, gameReadycourse.com. Um, you can get a free mental toughness download there if you like that as well. So. And also be a part of your email list. Yeah, as well, yeah, so. yeah. You can get the stuff there, there. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Thanks again. And, you know, I look forward to continuing to follow your course and to hopefully collaborate with you more in the future. Definitely, definitely. I look forward to hearing about your success, my friend. I appreciate it. Thank you for continuing to support this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, then please leave a five-star review. And if you haven't done so, subscribe so you continue to get the updated episodes. Until later, peace.